Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the uh, 3D Keyer node. And uh, we've uh, pretty much finished all of our Fusion nodes. And what I say by Fusion nodes, all these node breakdowns we've been doing in the past are nodes available within DaVinci Resolve Fusion. And they're also available within uh, Fusion Studio, the standalone. So they're all resident Fusion nodes. Now we're going to start going over the OFX nodes available within DaVinci Resolve Fusion. This means they're not going to be available in the studio version unless you have a, uh, there's a plugin I believe that allows you to use them. But these are nodes that are available in the normal DaVinci Resolve portion. So like in our color grading tab, all these qualifiers and everything, they're available as Fusion OFX nodes. So we can use these nodes within Fusion. So if we jump back into Fusion and uh, on our little footage here, let's say we want to key that out, we could use the 3D keyer. And you notice this top one because I'm pretty much going to be going in alphabetical order to hit all these OFX nodes that are available within Fusion. So I'm going to add the 3D keyer. And notice it says D keyer, but that is not the Delta keyer. That is the 3D keyer from the color grading tab on our qualifier, this 3D keyer right here. This is what we're using. So let's jump into our keyer node and uh, it operates pretty much like any other keyer. There's uh, some extra little features, but if we hit our uh, little picker right here, our main picker, this is for picking our qualifying colors. This one is for removing those, and this is for adding additional strokes. What you're gonna do is you're going to uh, pick your color. So I'm just going to stroke across here and pick my color. And if I need to add an additional stroke, I'm just going to add an additional stroke. So we just keyed out our uh, blue color. And up here under our strokes, well, first we have invert, so we can invert our selection. But under strokes, you can see we have our two strokes listed. So if we want to get rid of that last stroke, we can, or our first stroke, we can get rid of our first stroke. So let's get our stroke back. And let's add this back and get our key again. And under here, we can delete that stroke, like I said, or we can reset everything. Now under our behaviors, this is where we pick our color space we're using. And uh, by default, it's set at YUV, but we can also use HSL, HSP, and lab colors. And down here, this is just how it's using that qualifier. And by default, it's set to flat, which is gonna give you your standard keyer mode. We can also use soft, tight, or luma. And right here we have despill amount. And this despill amount isn't going to uh, work too great. It works a little, little bit. But if we look at our fingers and I uh, increase that despill, you can see it's kind of just changing the colors of that from that blue to green. <laughs> so that is your despill. Now under our usage, let me go ahead and fit this back in. We can show our pass, show smart pass if we have them. Our auto black and white highlight is going to auto black and white any highlights we have. And we can show our key map. And this is basically our map of our colors. And if we're showing that key map, we can use this key map to zoom in and out, to uh, zoom in and out of our key map. Under our key adjustments, we can uh, adjust chroma tolerance, the chroma softness. And uh, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And we can select adaptive chroma if we want to uh, use non-adaptive and then we can reselect that adaptive chroma. We can tilt our chroma key. We can uh, shift it and we can rotate it. Additionally, we can uh, adjust our low luma. So those low colors are coming back in. And we can adjust our high if we need those in or out. 
I'll leave those down so we can see these next ones. We can adjust the low softness and the high softness. Under matte finesse, we have two panels under the finesse and our first one, we can apply a pre-filter. We can clean our blacks. And uh, let me zoom in here a little more. We can clean our whites. We have black clip. White clip that's going to clip our whites. We have blur radius. And then we have our in and out ratio for that matte finesse. Under our second options, we can uh, change how we're doing our morphing operations. And by default, it's closing. So let's go to a thinner part. And if I change our morph radius, you can see that coming in. And our other morph operations are opening. So we can change the opening of that morph. We can grow it. And we can shrink it. We can also add some denoising on our edges, bring in alpha on our shadow areas, or our midtones, or our highlights independently. And then we have post filter right here. And post filter is probably a little better for cleaning up your spill. So we can go to our fingers here. And if we look at our post filter, can see that's pulling that color. We're not looking around here. We're looking on her actual finger. This is before, and this is pulling some of that color out. So you can see that blue just coming out a little bit. And then we have garbage mat options, because if you notice, we don't have an input for a garbage mat on here. All we have is an input for an actual effect. Meaning if I brought in a rectangle, plugged it in, it's only going to take effect wherever I have that uh, effect mask at. But it is not a garbage mat. But on our keyer itself, we have the ability to add a rectangle. And if we invert that, it operates like a regular garbage mat. We can uh, move it around with this gizmo. We can change the size. Additionally, we can uh, invert it. Change the softness. We can change our width. Our height independently, as well as rotate. And we also have the ability to use an ellipse. And then finally, we have our output options, which are our final composite. But we also have alpha highlight, alpha highlight, black, white, and our final composite. So that is the OFX 3D keyer available in Fusion. I will see you in the next No Breakdown.